Hi everybody, hope you're well. Thanks for clicking on my channel. Just a couple of things. If you like what you see, please feel free to smash that subscription button just down here. Uh, just approaching a thousand subscribers, that'd be great to help me out. And if you've got any comments to make at the end of the video, just feel free to put any comments in the comments section below. So as you know, I'm on my KTM 890R journey. I've had the KTM now for uh, just under two weeks and just doing a vlog, just highlighting the, uh, the goods and the not so goods uh, in relation to being a new person uh, owning a KTM 890R. And I absolutely love this mini beast. So vlog number three, the weather outside is pretty crap actually. So I thought what, what better time to jump down into the man cave and then just do a quick uh, vlog on the TFT instrument display on the KTM 890R. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So guys, this is definitely not gonna be a full in-depth review of the TFT and all the menu systems that will take uh, forever and we get highly complicated. As I said, I've had the bike for two weeks. I've downloaded the owner's manual in PDF format from the KTM website. I've sat down with a cup of tea and a packet of biscuits and inwardly digest digested uh, said manual and played with the screen and all the buttons. And so I'm just gonna pass on to you uh, what I've learned in those two weeks of uh, ownership of the KTM, uh, things I think would be good to know. So let's have a look, shall we? So before we get going then, just to let you know, so my battery is not going to go flat, I've uh, connected the battery to a battery charger. In this case, it's an Optimate one. So looking at the screen then, uh, you might notice if I just point it out here, the little light coloured mark. Uh, that's actually the uh, light sensor. Uh, the TFT screen as it stands, there is no menu option at all to uh, have a dark screen or a light screen. It's purely controlled automatically by this little light sensor, which is such a shame. It's a shame that uh, KTM don't give you the option to uh, have a permanent uh, light screen or a dark screen. Um, so you've got no control over that. I guess what you could do though, is put a little bit of tape over that sensor and then that would leave, you, leave it in a permanent uh, uh, nighttime uh, mode, should we call it. So put the screen on. Uh, there's not much ambient light in here, so it will go to dark screen. There we go, ready to race. So there you can see there that it's in the dark mode and you can quite clearly see the little sensor uh, at the top here. So if I just shine my torch on it, just to prove that that's the case, there you go. Uh, after about 10 seconds or so, it will go to daylight mode. And again, you've got no control over that option, which is a shame, because I quite like the dark uh, darkness mode. The only thing I will say with the screen is uh, it would be a little, it would be nice to have a little bit more uh, contrast uh, when the sun's out. It can be just a little bit on the soft uh, side, shall we say. Apologies for the uh, video quality. It's always quite uh, difficult to uh, video a TFT screen with the light, etc. So here we go then. This is the uh, main home screen, shall we call it. Um, obviously, uh, I'm in my garage where there's uh, lowish light. So the sensor, as I pointed out earlier, uh, is saying that uh, it's going to go into uh, darkness mode. So it's no problem. Uh, the information contained here is exactly the same as the daylight mode. So on the outside, obviously, you guys, you already know, and you're just teaching to suck eggs. Uh, you've got the uh, warning lights, uh, neutral light, and then if we put the indicators on, then you haven't got a left and right indicator. It's uh, both left and right. So so there we go. You haven't got individual uh, left and right indicators. Uh, what I will say is some people think you can actually change the information contained at the bottom of the screen. Well, here you cannot uh, on this particular screen, which is the normal screen. If you get the tech pack, then with the uh, track mode, you'll have something slightly different, but I'll show you very shortly. But you cannot change uh, this screen whatsoever. You'll have the uh, range left of fuel in the tank, how many miles you've done based on trip one. You can't change that to trip two at all. Uh, you can change the uh, Fahrenheit or centigrade and you can change the time to uh, 14 hour, 24 hour clock or the standard uh, 139, 239 p.m. type thing. And obviously the ABS, uh, what you've got selected. Um, obviously the uh, rev uh, scale. Uh, I'm still running the bike in at the moment, um, so I cannot select the uh, uh, rev limiter uh, lighting to come on. I think it just comes on automatic at six and a half thousand revs to tell me I'm still running in. Uh, the neutral uh, indicator there, that's a gear indicator, telling me that I'm in street mode, miles per hour, you can change to kilometers, and obviously uh, fuel and uh, temperature, uh, just on a, on a block system, 
um, but obviously the bike hasn't been run today because the weather outside is pants. So that is your uh, typical uh, home screen uh, that you get. And as I said, you cannot change any of the information along here. So what I'll do now is just go into the uh, track mode. I just do the normal way to go into it. So use your, uh, I call it set button or the enter button, favorites, data, uh, ride mode. So we want the ride mode, just gonna select down to ride mode, select enter or set. You see I'm in uh, street mode, which is on. I can just scroll down to the track mode. I'm gonna enter the track mode. And then you go all the options uh, which you have in the track mode, which you do not have in the uh, rain, street and sport mode. So here you can see you can adjust the throttle response. And you, there you go, track, sport or street. So it's in track at the moment. I just use the back button to come back to the previous screen. And then this is the mode part of the menu where you can uh, turn the anti-wheelie mode uh, on or off and you have launch control in the track section as well so these are the this is the only mode the track mode that you can uh, switch the anti-wheelie off and also then operate the launch control so if i go back to the home screen shall we call it so we are now in uh, track mode and you'll see that pretty much it's the menu system down the bottom here is pretty much the same a couple of things have changed awn uh, M, sorry, anti-wheelie mode is now on because we're in the track mode, so you can switch it on and off. And launch control, because it's still being running, is not applicable at the moment. And you've got slip control uh, from one to nine. Uh, you guys can read about that in the manual. Uh, but one is the least intervention, nine is the most intervention. And the good thing with that on the buttons on the handlebar here, uh, you can operate the button down and you can see uh, the, where is it? You can see the number here, the slip number changes. And if you operate the top button, it will go up to nine. So you can actually operate that on the fly when you're thrashing it around the racetrack or on the, on the public highway, you can dial in the amount of slip you want from the rear wheel. So uh, just to get back to uh, the normal road street and uh, rain mode, uh, I'm gonna go press set and I will go into track mode and then uh, I'm gonna leave track mode. The good thing with the buttons is you don't have to um, scroll down to get to the bottom. So if you're at the top, it's like a rotating cylinder. If you go up, then it'll go to the bottom, if that makes sense. So there we go, I want to leave track mode. So I hit my enter button. So I've left the track mode and then I'm gonna go into, um, let's go into sport mode. So just using the up and down arrow as you can see, into sport mode. It's all pretty simple, guys. You know how to do all this. And then back to the home screen. So there we go, sport mode. And you can see just down here, we've now got trip one, 54 miles I've done on trip one, and 90 miles of uh, range uh, remaining. So there is only one way of operating uh, the menus, etc. So it is purely by these four buttons here. And I reckon it's a very good little system that they've got. And obviously we've got the uh, cruise control uh, operations here as well um, so if you want to go into the menu then let's have a look at that so just use the set button so I think we'll just have a look at scroll down at motorcycle it's just gonna be a very quick look so what's the bike got then so we've got heated grips again there's an arrow next to it so it means you can uh, enter uh, into that menu a bit more uh, we know uh, motorcycle traction control and multi-slip uh, is uh, selected on there as well. ABS mode, obviously road, quick shifter is off. I'm still running the bike in and I find it a little bit um, clunky. So I've switched the quick shifter off at the moment. Uh, shift light, I can't actually operate anything on that uh, because I haven't uh, run the bike in yet. And then if I just go down one more, well, that's it. So that's all we have about the motorbike. And then we just press the back button and then gets me back to that first uh, menu. So rider mode, pretty much uh, pretty self-explanatory in fairness. Ride mode, you've got all the ride modes, so currently in sport mode. If I wanted to go to street mode, just scroll down and you have to then press the enter button and then you'll see it says on. So uh, arrow back up again, once sport mode, but you have to actually select it. So on, and there we go, it's on. Um, we've already shown you about the track mode. So use the uh, back command. And then we go back to home screen. 
So that was the uh, motorcycle uh, ride motor we've spoken about. Trips and data, let's scroll down then. So what do you got in there? So uh, trip one, uh, and then it's got all kinds of stuff when you uh, go further into it, uh, consumption, all that kind of stuff, and you can set that for whatever you want uh, as well. So I'm not gonna bore you crazy with that. Trip one and two are the same. General information about the bike then, enter that. Uh, today's date, how many miles I've done? 280 miles, battery voltage 12.1. Tire pressures, that's an optional extra on this bike and it won't actually register uh, until the bike is rolling forward. So that's what you get in the general info. Let's go back one more settings then. Again, uh, using the uh, enter set button then. Settings, you see there's an arrow there, that means there's something else, so press the set button. In we go again. So I've got the optional Bluetooth, which I've switched off at the moment. Units, miles per hour, kilometers, all that kind of stuff. There we go, distance, miles, temperature, degrees C, pressure, PSI or bar, and consumption. Uh, I think there's quite a few on the consumption uh, section. There we go, you've got uh, fully boots, as they say, uh, miles per gallon, miles per litre. So I might just select uh, miles per litre. So there we go, and that is done. Go back, um, language, obviously uh, English, UK, clock date. So there we go, and yep, that's all fine. I might give you some duff information there. You might only just be able to set it for the uh, 24 hour clock. It does look like it's slightly blue on here on the screen, looking at the, uh, through the camera, through the phone but it is actually uh, just various shades of gray, just to let you know about that. So it's not blue, it is gray. Obviously I should say that uh, when you're going through the uh, menus, if you're riding along uh, and it's safe to do so, and you can operate the menus uh, safely, then obviously it, it still shows you how fast you're going in the uh, miles per hour bit here. Uh, DRLs, day type running lights, I'll do a separate video on those. They can be a little bit confusing. Um, but they're on at the moment. And tire pressure warning, uh, that's on or off. And quick selector one, quick selector two, we'll talk about those very shortly. Uh, set favorites, we'll set those, we'll talk about those. Heater grips, so they're fitted as well. Uh, it says they're available. And what else is there? That's it. So let's uh, scroll all the way back. Um, what else is there to talk about? Um, let's have a look. So favourites then. Um, favourites, some people think that's to do with uh, setting on uh, the uh, home um, bottom here. It's got nothing to do with that at all. Whatever you set in favourites has no bearing, no bearing whatsoever on the information you can see on the bottom of the home screen. So let's have a look at, so I'm going to go into set favourites. So basically uh, you can set your five See, one, two, three, four, five. The five menus uh, that you use uh, mostly. So it saves you uh, button pressing like a lunatic. So uh, at the top one then, I've got ride, ride mode. Uh, and just for uh, illustration purposes, I've set two odometers. So that's your main total mileage uh, because you do not get the total mileage on the home screen. And there's no way of putting that on there. So you have to uh, drill down into the um, uh, general settings I think that is, uh, or uh, just put it on the favourites. Um, and I've selected uh, traction control and MSR and the audio player because I've gone for the Bluetooth thing as well. So it's just a quick way of accessing uh, certain menus, uh, which is um, very good actually. And if you go into odometer, let's have a look, that will take you into the page where uh, and the menu where all that information is stored. Uh, so in this case, the odometer is in the general information section uh, with all that uh, information there as well. And then if you press the back button, it doesn't take you back to the home screen. You've then got to drill back to the home screen through all the other menus. So you can see to get to the odometer, you'd have to go through several menus to get there. Whereas now, if you want to go to the odometer because it's not displayed, the, the uh, total mileage of the bike, it's not displayed down here at all. So I can go into set, uh, favorites and just click down to odometer and it's there in fact you don't have to click down to odometer because it is already there in view so how do we uh, set the favorites then so if I can remember how to do this properly so let's go down to uh, trips and data there should be a settings uh, section in there let's have a look um, let's just make sure yeah so I can scroll come up from the bottom settings and Let's have a look. 
is it in there tps quick selector one right set favorites that's what you need to know set favorites and there we go so uh riding mode so that's the list of uh my favorites uh selected already and let's go uh, and change this one and it gives you all the things that you can put on there so what do you want to put on there let's have a look let's put trip two uh, on there now so the odometer is now being replaced by trip two and then if i scroll all the way out with the back button back to the home screen the minute i set set favorites again there we go trip two is one of the favorites and then you can drill down and then drill into the trip two and it's got all the bump in relation to trip two and it, and then if i want to go back to the home screen again blah -de blah -de blah you have to go back through all the bump so i hope that makes sense so that's how you set your favorites but just to highlight guys you cannot change the bottom uh, menus down here or the information uh, shown there you cannot change that which is a shame but there we go so let's have a look at the trips and data going into their trip one then. So plenty of stuff on there, look. Um, yeah, all self-explanatory and you can adjust those uh, miles per litre, miles per gallon, etc. Uh, in the settings uh, as and where you want to. So just coming back out of there, trip two is exactly the same. General information is the general information page. That's where the tire pressure monitor system is housed as well and the total mileage odometer and obviously today's date uh, settings uh, yeah we've already spoken a little bit about that I think um, so all that stuff is in there quick selector one and two uh, is in there and then we finally we have the service uh, service during 341 miles just over 600 miles total and the software version 0013 um, uh, extra functions, so this is what you've paid for. So I paid for KTM MyRide, TPMS, Tire Pressure Monitor System, Cruise Control, Quick Shifter Plus, that's a blipper uh, down and uh, Quick Shifter Up, uh, Multi-Slip Regulation, uh, Anti-Wheelie Mode, uh, Slip Adjuster, Launch Control, Track Mode, and that is it. So that's all the extra bits that I've had put on uh, with the uh, Tech Pack and also the Cruise Control uh, as well and Heater Grips and the tire pressure monitor system. So another cool feature that the bike's got is quick selector keys. And I really do like the way KTM have made the buttons uh, very uncomplicated and not too many of them. And you look at some bikes, there's so many buttons on the handlebars, it's ridiculous. So how do we set the quick selector then? So what you need to do is go into set and then data and then into settings and then down to quick select to one and two. So there we go, quick select to one, ride mode, which I've done. And then quick select to two is going to be uh, my heater grips. There you go. In fact, I could go quick select to two and TPMS. There we go. So let's go back home. And now I've got quick selector one, just top button here. There you go, Bosch, and that's the ride mode still. Come back, quick selector two, and then that takes me into tire pressure. And that's contained within the general info that you can see on here. So that's where the tire pressure is. But the bike's not moving, so no rotation. It doesn't activate the, the signal. Um, so that's the quick selector, what I think is a really good, um, Good little system again you can operate those two on the fly i really like that that's good guys that's a thumbs up to ktm on that so guys if you want to turn your abs uh off which obviously you can only switch the rear abs off european legislation means you cannot deactivate the uh, front abs so if you want to switch that off um or use the um uh, traction control uh, do things with that then you can a couple of ways you can go into the set section and then just go down to the motorcycle, enter there, and then you see uh, motorcycle traction control and slip regulation and ABS mode. So ABS mode is road, so that's uh, front and rear. If I just press enter, it says uh, multi-slip multi regulation is disabled in the current ABS, so it hasn't got the MSR on the back. And then if I go back there, ABS mode is now in super motor mode, so you can jump on the back brake and skid it around the corner. 
Uh, back to the home page then, and you can see we've got to ABS uh, Supermoto mode on there as well. Uh, back to set then, into motorcycle. And I'm just going to come out of uh, Supermoto mode, back to road. And you'll see when I came out from uh, road mode, or back into road mode, the MSR uh, activated again. So if I switch the road mode off, there we go, the uh, MSR has been deactivated um, because you've uh, done away with the um, uh, rear uh, ABS. So you're just jumping on the back brake and locking it up. So the electronics can't control that now, uh, the slip regulation. Uh, motorcycle traction control, yeah, I can uh, have to hold that down, keep pressed and close the throttle and release the button. There you go. So motorcycle traction control is off, but I've got uh, super moto mode on. So, uh, so yeah, so that's uh, what I've got there. And then I think if we switch it off, uh, I'd be interested to see what it goes uh, back to. So we've got traction control switched off. ABS mode is super moto. So you've uh, pulled over on the side of the road, you've switched the bike off, having a chat and a coffee, put the thing on again. Uh, what's the bike going to do? So it's all ready to race. Uh, so still in super moto mode, uh, which is fine. And then let's just go into motorcycle and see what the uh, traction troll. So motorcycle traction troll is now on. And there we go, switched it off. So obviously when you uh, switch the ignition off, the motorcycle traction control uh, defaults back to uh, on. Guys, there's more than one way to skin the cat. So uh, in the favorite section, you'll see there that we have got favorites, uh, ride mode, odometer, trip two, MCT and MSR. So that's on at the moment. So again, I can sort of turn stuff off um, uh, from the uh, from the motorcycle section, so let's do let's switch that's off and ABS motors road, and that's been disabled. So we're now super moto mode. So that's another way you can do it. Um, yep. Yeah, so let's just set that back to road, and there's the MCT and MSR, and uh, let's just turn keep pressed and close the throttle. So let's just switch that back on and just uh, keeping the button press as it says on the screen. I suppose we can talk about the cruise control. It's a lovely little system actually. Um, what you do is when you arm the cruise control system, uh, you just rock the switch there and then you see on the uh, console you have, it, so it's like a yellowy, greeny kind of thing. So that means it's armed and you get the corresponding uh, sp speed dial up here. And then uh, once you've armed it, I'll do a video at some point, but I'm not going out in the rain. Then you can set it either uh, fast or slow. One click up is one miles an hour. One click down is one miles an hour. And if you hold it in um, permanently, then it goes up in blocks of five. And you'll see the speed, the pre-selected speed will come up next to the little speedo there where the three dashes are. Uh, I found the best way to deactivate it is just get just touch the front brake. And that tends to uh, be certainly smoother than uh, deactivating it from uh, the rocker switch there uh, as you can see it's gone off there good thing is if you want to accelerate and the cruise control is on you want to do a quick overtake you can wind the gas on and then as long as you're slow back down again within 30 seconds it will uh, once you roll off the gas it will pick up the speed that was let's have a look that was um, selected on the dash there so that's a very good little system but i'll do another video on that at some other point so guys, finally then, if you're riding along and you want to change your uh, mode, in this case, from street mode, uh, I'm just going to use the quick selector that I've, I've got. So I want to go in sport mode. So I'm riding along, I've got a little bit of throttle on. So I can, uh, the sport mode is highlighted. I can press the set, set button to on, and it's just going to say close the throttle. So I'll close the throttle, and then in this case, it's now happy with that. Uh, and it's now allowed me to select the sport mode, and then go back to the home screen. And there we see sport mode. Job. Guys, I do hope that's been of some assistance to you. It's a little bit complicated, a little bit mundane and boring, dare I say it. But uh, I hope you found some of it useful. Uh, please put any comments in the comments section below. Um, other than that, have a great day, ride safe, and please feel free to smash that subscribe button. 
that would be most appreciated. Uh, take care and see you all again soon in the next vlog. Cheerio. Bye.